Let's read Proverbs 31 together. One, two, ready to read. Who can find a virtuous woman? That's a question. For her worth is far above rubies. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night, amen, and provides food for her household. She opens her mouth with wisdom. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. That's mama. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I solicit your assistance this morning as your orator and communicator of your word. I ask that you would give us an ear to hear beyond the male vocalism that I present. And I ask that the spirit would speak to each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. amen. You may be seated. Today's message is simply entitled, Thank God for the Mothership. Amen. I'll try it again. Thank God for the mothership. Amen. Amen. If you're from the Parliament of Funk old school, there's another mothership that we used to sing and dance about. But this mothership is not the one that came from outer space. This mothership is every mother that's in this room, every mother that is on this planet, every mother that is making a difference, every mother that's going to make a difference. And today I just wanna highlight moms. I wanna encourage moms, I wanna lift them up as high as I can, new moms. If you're a new mom, we are praying for you because you, if you have never had a child, you can watch everybody be a mother, you can babysit somebody else's child, but it's a game changer when it's yours. Amen, somebody? It's a game changer. This morning we salute all grandmothers. Because where would we? That's right. Y'all know y'all better clap for grandmamas. And when you don't know what to do, grandma say, give me that baby. And she take care of the baby while she teaching you how to take care of the baby. I want to honor today single mothers. Amen. Amen. And I know different churches and different pastors have different philosophies and theologies about single mothers, but I salute single mothers because you made the choice to be a mother in spite of all the odds and the obstacles that you have to face. And if you think being a single mom is easy, just talk to one. Amen. It's work, 24 hours, amen, 365 days of the year. I also want to let our teenage mothers know amen. that we honor you today. Amen. That's right. That's right, we honor you today. And although we don't, we don't encourage teenage pregnancies, we encourage you to wait until you get an education and finances, but since you have made that decision, I want you to hold your head up today and know that God loves you and know that God has a plan for you and your baby. Amen, somebody? I want to recognize stay-at-home moms. Amen. Unsung heroes. Who those who are foolish say that they aren't doing anything. You try to stay home all day with your children. That's why men be trying to go to work early and try to work late. Amen. Say, oh, y'all don't want to tell the truth. He don't love his job that much. He just can't do what you do the way that you do it. Want to recognize most certainly working moms. Good God Almighty. Play a salute every one of y'all. I know every husband better clap. You know, if your lady's working, man, she's helping to carry that load. She's doing more than her share, amen. amen. Last but not least, I want to honor and remember our mourning moms. Amen. 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 I have preached many a Mother's Day sermon, so I'm not a novice on this day. I am keenly aware that there are women sitting here drowning in pain masked with Maybelline and CoverGirl and a smile to hide your true feelings. I know that you are hurting today because while everybody else is celebrating their living mother, you are having to still deal with the fact that your mother is gone and you cannot look her in her face and tell her, Mama, I love you. And to those that miss this importance, oftentimes we don't appreciate something or someone. 
until they are gone. Yes. And I said all that to say this, shame on you if you don't show some type of love and appreciation for your mom today, whether she's living or whether she's gone on, every one of us should do something to honor our mother today. You gotta stop by the cemetery, stop by the cemetery. People say, why are you stopping by the cemetery? They aren't there, because I'm honoring the last place I left her, the last place. I know where she is spiritually, but I honor her physically. I called my mother this morning at 7 something a.m. Because I'm an early riser. First lady said, you're going to wake your mama up. You're calling too early. I said, oh, shh. <laughs> Let men do what men do. I called and it rang and rang and rang and rang and rang. And I was about to hang up, but then I noticed she was calling me. So I switched over and I said, good morning, mother. Happy Mother's Day. She said, good morning. <laughs> Here's how sweet my mom. I said, did I wake you? She said, no. I said, you lying, sister. My wife said, you should have waited till this evening. You should have waited till you knew she was up. And I said to her, that's the problem. We always think we got time to wait. We always think I'll do it this evening, I'll do it tomorrow, but nobody knows the day or the hour when your time is up. I want to give you a couple of things that mothers do that I think are important, but I want to illustrate it in a way that I think everybody can understand it. I want to thank Calvin this morning for assisting me with my illustration. Somebody say, thank God for the mothership. Now I know this is not a ship, but it'll have to do because the church is on a budget. Somebody say, thank God, thank God. For, the for the mothership. Mother ship. Number one, one of the things mothers do that no one else can do is mothers conceive. I look at Genesis 4 and 1, and it says, Adam knew Eve, his wife. I love this scripture. And she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Then I cha-cha slide down to Luke 1, 30 through 31, and I see where it says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Goes on to say, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus. Somebody say mothers, mothers conceive. conceive. Here's a question. How important are mothers? I thought about this yesterday and I never thought about it before. I never heard anybody say it but I hope it impresses you to the degree that you will always remember it. Mothers are so important that God was willing to trust a mom with a child without the help of a man. Watch this. But he was not willing to trust a man with a child without the help of a woman. He made Adam and said, you know what? He gonna need some help. But here's Mary who has a baby with no assistance from a man. And I want to thank and appreciate every husband, every boyfriend is doing what he's supposed to be doing. But I got to touch on this issue. Moms, if nobody will help you, God will help you. Yeah. If you I'm, trust me, trust me, if baby daddy won't help you, let me tell you something. Heavenly daddy will help you. Because he would have never allowed you to have that child if he did not have a plan for you and that child. So don't always be discouraged because the person that procreated the child will not help you raise the child. Somebody say, that's good right there. How important is a mother, Pastor? Well, Eve declared with clarity. I want you to look at Genesis 4 and 1 because I never saw this until this week. Eve declared with clarity something that mothers should do or continue to do. She had a baby. She knew it was a boy, but she spoke into the gender of his life and she said, I know he's a baby, but I'm going to prophesy I have gotten a man from the Lord. What are you telling me, Pastor? Every mom, when you have a baby, you've got to make sure that that baby, if it's a girl, stays a girl. I'm going to clap for myself. Y'all ain't going to like this right here. 
Uh, you like that? Yo, I like that myself. Yeah, and if you got a baby and he's a boy, you got to make sure he stay a boy. Okay, look at the text. Thank you for the clap in the back. Look at the text. She said, listen, he's a boy. He's not going to turn into a girl. Come on. He's not going to call y'all. Read the text. She said, my baby is going to become a man. And a lot of men are still boys because their mama didn't tell them they were supposed to grow up. They I'm sorry, I'm loud too early. I'm loud too early, Erica. You don't get loud on point one like that. A lot of men did not transition from baby boy. Come on, because mama failed to tell them, I ain't going to let you be a boy your whole life. A real mama will look at her baby girl and say, okay, I'm washing dishes now, but the day gonna come, you gonna grow up, oh, and you gonna be busting some suds, baby, you ain't just gonna eat and put your plate in the sink and go to your room. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Okay, y'all don't like that. Eve declared, he's a boy now, but I am going to secure his gender. He will become a man. Amen. And guess what he became? Amen. A man. You start seeing your boys becoming something other than a man, mama, it's your job to speak into his life. Don't always try to put it on the daddy. Yeah, we, listen, we'll talk about fathers on Father's Day, but sometimes mothers like to say, hey, Junior, 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 got, junior, junior, junior got a little sugar in the tank. Junior around here switching. I caught Junior in my, in my high heel shoes. Uh, uh, I started to say that name, I ain't gonna say that name. Carolyn, Carolyn uh, rock around here like she a boy. Carolyn don't like to wear dresses. Carolyn says she wanna be a man. And you want to hand that off. Mama, I'm telling you today, you have the power to declare my girl going to become a grown woman. My baby boy going to be, y'all don't like this right here. You can speak over your child and you better speak over your child in these days and age. My sister say, I've gotten a man, and he a little bit of baby. I got a man from the Lord. I say, speak, girl. Somebody say, mothers, mothers. Conceive. conceive. I need a small child. Thank you very much. I thought it was a eloquent, but yet exquisite point. Yeah, come here, baby. Come up here and use the stairs, sir. What's your name? Rashad? Rashad? I got it. Come on. Can y'all give Rashad a hand? Yeah. Now, most people don't like to be a part of my illustrations because they, they don't never know what's going to happen. They say, I keep them up here too long, so whatever. Do me a favor. I would like for you to get inside the mother ship. Have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. Are you relaxed? Because this is what it looks like when a mother conceives. Yeah, this is what it looks like because even though the baby is out of her womb, that baby is still in her spirit, in her heart, in the, I'm in, that baby's in everything that she does and literally mothers carry their children more than nine months most mothers carry their children 19 years and because this is in a millennial generation now you're having to carry them a long time amen somebody a long time a long time amen so somebody say mothers conceive can I give you number two mothers care Mothers care like nobody else cares. Where you get that from? Isaiah 49 and 15 says this. Can a woman forget her nursing child? Mm, I could preach on that. That she should have no compassion on her son of her womb. It is rare to see a mom who has forgotten her nursing child. Hold your seat, gentlemen. We have seen many fathers create a baby. Come on, brothers, say amen. Yeah. Know it's your baby. First thing you say, ain't my baby. So we get a test. Doctor say 99.9999999% your baby. And then you disappear. Why? Because you didn't plan on this being a part of your life but I got to tell you neither did the mother neither did the woman but I thank God that God has put something special in most women that no matter what the circumstances are they will not forget their nursing child so much so that they put their children before themselves 
They delay things that they want. Sometimes they delay their own education. Sometimes they need to get their hair done. They need to go, you know, get some clothes for themselves. But they're always thinking about their children. This is what it looks like when a mother cares. A mother cares so much that a mother makes sure that the child is equipped and that the child is comfortable enough to learn how to navigate through life. The oars represent the teachings that a mother gives her child so that if something go wrong, the child can still move forward in life. If there's an issue, the child has been equipped. Why? Because if you don't teach your children how to survive, you really don't care for them. If all you do is make them look good with fancy clothes, you don't care for them. Hold your seat, mama. If you don't mandate that your children get good grades, and you ain't gonna clap, but that's okay. I, we don't get a hot spot where you can get happy. You don't care for your children, mama. You sitting your child to school and you don't ever check their report card. You don't ever mandate that they have to pass. You don't ever, well, I'll talk about that later. Get on that backside. You don't ever pop up at school. I gotta tell you something, mama, you don't care. Because when you care, watch this, when you care, oh, you be there. When you care, you're going to get off your job no matter what it costs. Because you know if you don't check on this thing, they might roll themselves in the wrong direction. If you don't check on this fella, he might get caught up with somebody else. So mothers care enough to do what mothers do and they never forget the nursing child. How many of you remember your mother having compassion for you? When daddy was beating the brakes off you. Maybe this is just my testimony with things like extension cords. Do I have a church that can go back? No, no, Pastor, no, no, not no extension cord. Yeah, an extension cord. And he would say, take all your clothes off. And he would commence to, whew. you could hear it coming before it arrived. I wish I had a real, see, we in 2018. Everybody look at me like, what is he talking about? My mama didn't have no affinity for the extension cord. I think it was a bit much for her, but Lula loved switches. I ain't talking about, I ain't talking about that. No, nah, Lula loved to me, make me go out. See, that's, that's evil, that's evil. That's the devil. Make me go out and get my own switch. And then she would give me these parting words of instruction. And it better not be no little one. If I really messed up, she would say, don't get one, bring me three. I don't have a real church, I know. That's why I can't stay in 2018, because some of us are so far removed. Do I have anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, don't worry about it. I educate y'all. I educate y'all. And I'll be shaking. I will be scared. I will be praying, pulling my own switches one, two, three times a lady. And I would say, here you go, mom. And I should say, go over there and stand over there and wait. And I'll call you when I'm ready. <laughs> and she would take those three switches. Evil. <laughs> Wicked. <laughs> And she would braid them like she was braiding hair. I thought that she did not love me. I thought that she did not care. But now that I'm about 50 years old, I understand the only reason why she put them switches on me was so she cared about me. She wanted to let me know you can't do anything in this world and not expect to pay the price for it. Thank God for a mother who cares. Number three. I'm getting loud early. It's too early. Number three. Mother's counsel. Say mother's, mother's counsel. counsel. Proverbs 31 and 26 anchors this concept. It says, oh, I love this. She opens her mouth. Not with, oh, Lord. Not with foolishness. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teachings of her kindness is on her tongues. What that simply means is that mothers, I don't know what it is, but they know how to get down on your level and say, hey, what you did was wrong. Look at me when I talk to you. That's mama. Look, to, no, look at me when I talk to you. What you did was wrong. Now, I understand why you did it, but let me give you some counsel. We don't act like that. 
we the Johnsons. And as the Johnson family, we carry ourselves in a certain way. Now you're gonna do your little ISS, but it better be the last time you end up in ISS. Cause you don't want me to come down to that school. How many of y'all know what that meant? You don't want me to come down to that school. Look at me when I talk to you. That's mama talk. And show out. Cause where you cut up at. So I like y'all. I ain't gotta explain it. I like when I don't have to explain everything. Anybody got a whipping in Walmart, Kmart, the restaurant, the church? Why? That was that motherly counsel letting you know. Wherever you cut up at, I'm going to give it to you. But she opens her mouth and has wisdom. And I got to tell y'all something, mama. You can't be a good mama and be ignorant. I hope you can receive this in love. Because it's 2018. See, we got a lot of women having babies. But yet, they don't have wisdom in their mouth. You can't have wisdom in your mouth. When you talking like a fool, acting like a fool, and your kids are looking up to you, they just gonna do what you do, cause why? Ain't no wisdom in your mouth. That means every mama has got to be an educated woman. And I'm not talking about college degrees, I'm talking about a woman that is learning, a woman that will read and educate herself so that when her children go through certain things, she's got a little wisdom and knowledge to guide them even when they don't wanna be guided. Do I have any mothers got a little wisdom in your mouth? God knows these children need it. They act like they know everything. Don't know nothing. Oh, they know a little bit. And I know sometimes you try to give them wisdom and they don't want to hear it and they try to shut you out. Give it to them anyway. Because they may resist it today, but a time is going to come. They'll be able to fall back on what mama said. Then you just said, mama used to say, take your time, young man. Mama used to say, don't be in no rush to get older. That's wisdom coming out of mama's mouth. All you young boys and your young girls, if your mama tell you you date somebody that ain't good for you, listen to mama's wisdom. Now you ain't gonna clap, you ain't gonna clap. You ain't gonna clap because you in love. <laughs> Little Pookie done just done took your heart. Mama tried to tell you, slow down, girl. Boy don't want number one thing. No, mama, he loved it me. He loved it me. No, girl, you don't want but one thing. Boy, boy, that ain't the girl for you. That ain't the girl for you. Mama, you don't know what you're talking about. Mama can see things. Amen. Now, I got to tell you something. My mother saw, to God heaven true, she saw what I could not see. And she was trying to give me wisdom. And how many of you young people could have missed a lot of mistakes? Come on, could have could have not had to go through some things you've already gone through. Listen, I know you're smelling yourself. I know you got a few hairs in some special places. I know, I know. I know you're growing up now and your voice is getting deeper and, and your body parts are, you know, shifting and changing. But let me tell you something. You still need your mama's wisdom. Because whatever you're trying to do, your mama already done done. Your mama has already seen. Your mama has already heard about it. And she's just trying to drop a little knowledge on you. Why? Because you got to appreciate the mothership. You all right, little buddy? You doing good for a little fella. Amen. I challenge every young person today that has not appreciated their mother's wisdom and their mother is still alive that maybe you can find a place today to say mama I just want to tell you thank you for all the times you tried to give me your wisdom come on maybe you can do that today I only got six I'm on number four number four mothers correct now, I'm probably not gonna get many amens here it's 2018 but the Word of God does not change the Bible says in Proverbs 29 and 17, correct your child. I'm going to say it again. Correct your child. Then the Bible backs it up with another piece of Proverbs 22 and 5. One of my favorites. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child. Where is it bound up? What's in that heart? 
Do you know what folly is? Folly is foolishness. Folly is stupidness. Folly is disobedience to what I told you not to do because there's something in your heart that when I tell you what to do, you want to do the exact opposite. And unfortunately, the older they get, the greater the folly increases. But the Bible has given us a pathway that provides great wisdom and will produce great prosperity in the area of the gluteus maximus. If you will study the anatomy of the human being, God has designed our children with a cushion. I wish I had a real church. Yes, thin brother, he's very thin, but if you'll notice, the Lord has given him extra flesh. Y'all don't want no real message today. God has given him extra flesh on his backside. I wonder what it's there for. 2018, y'all got it twisted, ladies. It ain't for twerking. I know y'all fascinated because you got, you know, you got the badonka dunk. You got racks on racks on racks on racks. I got you. And you think it's for left cheek, right cheek twerk. No, it ain't for that. Let pastor teach you. God put it there for a reason. God put it there because he told every mother, I wish I had a church. All y'all that don't believe in whipping your children. All of you that don't believe that this is the way to go. All of you that believe all you got to do is talk to them. The Bible said. See how, see how the claps just drop off? I don't care. The Bible said it. And I don't care if you work for defects. The Bible said it. I go to jail by this right here. That's my kids. They know I believe in this scripture. What the Bible say, Pastor? The Bible say, but the rod. The rod of discipline. Somebody say, huh? The rod of discipline will drive it far from him. Hey. Send me one of your boys, one of Emmanuel boys. Send me the one in the little shirt down on the end, the little plaid shirt. Hurry up. Y'all know what this is? This is his folly. This is the folly that lives in his heart. Get in, get in, get in the mothership. Get in the mothership. The two are one. This is the folly that's in his heart. This is what makes him disobey. This is what makes him talk back and act like he grown. This is what makes him lie to your face. Yeah. Or her lie to your face. And I don't care how well managed you think your children are. Preach Pastor Troy. I'm sick of parents talking about my child ain't did nothing wrong at school. My child would never do that. Child children act different when they get away from home. My children did, your children will. Don't you think your children are angels? Y'all don't like it, y'all. I'm a, I got to preach the truth in here. All right. Bible say they got folly in their heart. Some of y'all know I'm telling the truth. But the problem is, I can't deal with the folly. I can't deal with the folly because it's, it's, it's bound up in his heart. And the only reason it gets free is because he releases it. I wish I had a... Because it's bound up in his heart. So when he get to release it, his folly, his folly starts telling him, hey, do what you want to do. You grown. Can't nobody tell you nothing. I know she said you couldn't go to the party when they all go to sleep, slide out the window. That's folly. Or oh, they wouldn't give you no money? You know they got some money in their bedroom. You know, you know they got a penny jar. A oh, I'm the only one stole out the quarter jar. But don't do me like that now. My mom and daddy had a jar that had coins in. I was so stupid when I was young. It had pennies, it had nickels, it had dimes, it had quarters. Show you how stupid I was. I first went in and took all the quarters. 
dumb, dumb, folly, just folly make it stupid. I ain't get caught. Then I went back, got all the dimes. Folly make it stupid. Went back, got all the nickels. I ain't want the pennies. One day my mama went there and looked at her, and it was one of them, it was a glass orange juice jar. See, I'm, I'm 50 years old, so I know things. Y'all remember when orange juice used to come in a glass jar? So my mama say, uh, Troy, you been in here my money? Know what father told me to do? Father told me to lie. I say, no, ma'am. I say, I ain't been in no money. Stood up straight, father. She say, well, son, all the silver gone. I said, Mom, I don't know nothing about it. She asked my other brother. He ain't know nothing. Asked my two sisters. He ain't know nothing. Now, y'all ain't gonna like this, but old school said this way. Oh, I like y'all today. I like y'all. I'm glad I came to church today. This is my church today. This I like this church right here. My mom and dad said, okay, since I can't get the truth out of all four of y'all, line up. Line up. I'm gonna whip everybody till somebody tell me the truth. Can I tell you what Father did to me? Father made me take a whipping. Father made me watch my brothers and sisters get a whipping. Then we went around again and again and again. And after a while, because she kept on beating me, Father was driven from me with every watch out. Father said, I can't take this. I got to get him gone before I get you too. Every time I pop him, I want you to take a step. Every time my mama hit me, bam, Father would get away, bam, Father would go further, bam, Father would leave, Father would say, I don't want no part of that, why? Because you're bound up in my heart, but when God says the rod will drive Father from it, God says, if you don't beat him, I wish I had a church. Get on off my stage before I whip you. Just like Father want to hang around, go somewhere. Get on. See, that's a beautiful thing. When father leaves your child, they say, mama, I'm sorry. When father leaves your child, they try to repair the damage that they've done. When father leaves your child, you see them grow up and learn from their mistakes. Mothers, correct. Not with an extension cord. I'm not talking about abuse, but there are times, moms, where you may have to take your hand and you may have to give them what I call the right hand of fellowship. And every time you reach back, you say, Holy Ghost, strengthen me now. Y'all see this? That's that golf swing. And what, what, what you do, moms, you contact and you lift them up. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all don't know how to whip your child. See, I'm going to teach you something. Y'all don't know. Y'all doing it wrong. Y'all doing it wrong. Y'all, that's the why. Why you say contact? Because if you hit and release, he don't get the full impact. So what you do, you reach back, Father, strengthen my hand. hi -ya! And every time he feel uplifted. hi -ya! Somebody say, won't he do it? Oh, yeah. Then after mother's correct, sit on down. I like you. They sent the right one today. After the mother corrects, the mother covers. Somebody say, number five. Mama, Mama. covers her child. Here's what the words say. I'm almost done. You guys have been a great audience today. You are my hiding place for me. Woo, you preserve me good. I like this from trouble, mama. Mama used to surround me with shouts of deliverance. See, when mama covers you, you mad at me? It's all, it, it's all good. He's like, I don't want to touch you. When mama covers you, after she's counseled you, <laughs> after she's corrected you, she understands that there will be times in your life where the enemy 
is going to come for you. There are going to be times in your life where your rebellion will blind you to the traps and the tricks of the enemy. But one thing I love about mamas is that no matter what you do and no matter where you go, mothers know how to take themselves and cover you in prayer, cover you with their love, cover you with their wisdom. Why? So that when the enemy comes around looking for you, sometimes the devil can't see our kids. That's why they don't get in the same trouble as other kids get in because mama has covered them in the blood of Jesus Christ. I know I should be in jail. I know I should be dead, but my mama covered me. Even when I was grown in Columbus, Georgia, acting like a fool, my mama would call me and say, Troy, I'm praying for you. And because she covered me, I'm here today to say thank God for the mothership. And every real mother will turn herself upside down just to cover her baby. I wish I had a church in here today. Every real mother, come on, every real mother will stand between her baby and a bullet, will stand between a baby and a bullet, will stand between a baby and a brother. A real mother will say, you ain't finna mishandle my child. It's some cool, peaceful women in here right now. Wouldn't hurt a fly day as nice as nice can be. But boy, if you go and you put your hands on their children, they turn into creatures that we have never seen the likes of. Why? Because God understands that a mother sometimes is going to be the only covering a child has. Sometimes, come on, come on. Y'all ain't going to, that's all right, I'm telling you. But I thank God for mamas that know how to cover and they make their children a hiding place. That's all your mama trying to do for you, little girl, is give you a hiding place. Little boy, all she's trying to do is give you a hiding place, a place where you can talk to somebody about what you're feeling. Now I'm blessed to stand on this stage and tell you, I'm a mama's boy. I'm a mama's boy, I'm blessed. And I love my dad, but me and my dad do not have the same kind of relationship me and my mama have. My mother and I have a special bond. I told her this morning, I said, I'll be by this evening and hopefully the rest of your other kids won't be there so it can just be you and me. That's exactly what I told her. She said, I hope they gone too. That's exactly what my mama said to me. Because I'm, I'm a baby, I'm first born. She said, I hope they gone too so you and me can have some alone time. I said, I look forward to that, mama. Why? Because... My mother gave me a hiding place. You cool, dude? <laughs> you cool, little buddy? All right, I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> My mother gave me a hiding place because like a lot of young people, you go through a lot of stages where you're trying to find yourself. And you may do different things, dress a certain way because you're trying to find your style, you're trying to find your swag. If you like me, you don't want to be like nobody else. You want to dress like, come on, young folk. Come on, if you like me, you know, if they going left, you going right. I was that dude, I done had every hair color they put on the, on the shelf, and then I mixed up hair colors to get new hair colors. I had it all. I've had the stair cut, I've had stuff running through my hair, I've done it all. I used to wear pink and red and green at the same time. I got pictures to prove it. And my daddy would look at me and say, you strange. I'll never forget one time my daddy asked me, was I gay? Straight face. He said, boy, you gay? I said, why would you say, he said, you're wearing all these colors. And I grew up in a day where everybody had a jerry curl. Do I have a real church? Come on, somebody. I also grew up in a day where Michael Jackson was the hottest thing on this planet. So imagine me with a jerry curl that I'm talking about all the way down here. You couldn't tell me nothing. I would wear a white glove to school. Don't, I'm, why y'all laughing, young folks? I'm preaching for y'all. And y'all gonna laugh at me? It's a different era, but y'all doing the same thing. Look how y'all dressing. Pants sagging. Jeans so tight, you about to die. Same thing, just a different era, so don't laugh at me. My daddy said, you weird, you strange. And that hurt my heart, because that was coming from my father. But my mother had given me a hiding place. It was in that hiding place that after my daddy called me strange, 
my mother would say, come here little Troy. My mother would say, look at me, mama talking to you. My mother would say, Troy, you're not strange. I never, it's like yesterday. She said, Troy, you're not weird. She said, Troy, you're unique. Amen. And then, and then she, and then she said this to me. She said, it's all right to be unique. She said, your uniqueness is going to set you apart from everybody else. I went from to. To this day, when my mama called me, my mama is a problem. Because my mama called me and tell me things like, you're the greatest, son. I'm so proud of you. Can't nobody touch you. You the best, son. This is today. I be like, keep talking, mama. Keep talking. <laughs> keep talking, mama. I said, I love you. You unique. I always knew you was going to do amazing things. Keep doing what you're doing. Boy, I get out of the phone with my mama. I'm a problem. I'm a problem. I tell my wife and my daughter, bow down. My mama said, I'm the best thing. Y'all better bow down. Thy head shall not be higher than mine. Bow down. Am I lying? Because my mama gave me a hiding place. She preserved me from trouble. She surrounded me with shouts. God, I wish I had more time. In other words, she walked around me and said, deliverance. I know he's on drugs right now. He's 19 and he's an alcoholic. But mama said, deliverance. She surrounded me, deliverance. Oh, Lord, he out there in the streets, but I'm going to speak deliverance. And my mama surrounded me with shouts of deliverance. And I'm going to tell you, I pray to God she keeps shouting. I pray to God she don't never stop shouting. Because there's power when your mama speak over your life and declare whatever got a hold on you, it ain't going to keep a hold on you. Why? Because mama said, good God Almighty. Yeah. Last point, I've got to go home. i got to go see my mama. Number six, the most important point I will give you today. Out of everything I've told you mothers do, if you don't do this, you have failed your children eternally. Mothers connect their children with Jesus. I didn't expect to get that many claps. What about the father? What, what the father gonna do? Mothers, you got to understand, you got so much power in you. That you have the ability to make sure your children know about the creator. Every new mom, let me hip you to a piece of wisdom. Read to your baby while your baby in your womb. My mama told me that's what she did for me. Speak life over your baby and tell your baby in the womb, you're going to be great. You're going to be amazing. You're going to be a billionaire, a millionaire, a trillionaire, a gazillionaire. You are going to be awesome and amazing. You're going to make a difference in this world, in the womb. Pastor, why should I do that? That child can't hear me. That child can't hear you. That child will know your voice more than anybody else's voice because of the vibrations every time you speak resonate down into where your womb is, where that baby is. That's why some mothers can speak and that baby get to moving. You can turn over and that baby get to kick and that baby's letting you know, Mom, I'm in here and we are connected. That's why daddies have to stand to the side while y'all having babies. We got to stand to the side and hold your hand and hope your squeeze don't kill us. We got to stand to the side and feed you the ice chips. I'm the only man did that. Furthest where y'all at? Feeding ice chips. Why she having a baby? I'm throwing them in the food y'all. Food y'all. Food y'all. She got but there's a great disconnect when a child is born because the father is there but he's not connected God connects every mother and child with an umbilical cord that's proof that you and that child have a bond that is greater than anybody will ever imagine and I know they act like they don't want to bond with you sometimes our children are slow Ooh, some of y'all got some slow kids in here. I'm talking about slow to recognize. Slow to recognize that the best thing they got going is they mama. They, they, slow to, they slow to figure it out. Most of us don't figure it out till we 19 or 20. I didn't figure it out till I had my own place, had my own bills, and had my own children. 
then I recognized everything my mama was doing was to prepare me for my life. But the one thing Lula made Westbrook win did, she gonna get me for that, is that she connected me with Jesus. She told me who he was, she told me how important he was, and my mother practiced Proverbs 22 and 6, she trained me up in the way that I should go. My mama did that. When I came to church, I had to sit up straight. I had to sit with my mama until I became a musician in the church. I used to play drums and trumpet and saxophone, all kinds of instruments. Before I became a musician, I had to sit by my mama. I don't know what it's like to sit in the back. I, I don't know what it's like, Free. I don't know what it's like to sit away because my mother would have me sit by her the whole service so that when I cut up, do I have a real church? Me and my brother. He would be on one side. I'll be, when we cut up, girls were no problem. Then why the preacher's preaching? My mom would say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, good God of mine. And keep looking straight. I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you that God, heaven, truth, Elko Road, great word of deliverance. My mom, glory, hallelujah. That's why I didn't like speaking in tongues for years, because I thought speaking in tongues meant somebody was going to hit you. And she would stay focused on the word. Or she would reach over and grab a chunk of my side. Do I have a real church in here? See, y'all young folk don't know nothing today. And she would grab this side meat. Everybody got side meat. I don't care how skinny you are. God gave you some side meat too. Side meat's for mama. And mama would get that side meat instead of praising God. And boy, she would twist and twist. And, and you'd be doing like. And then she'd look over you and say, you better not say nothing. See, y'all young folk don't know. They don't know nothing about that. Because she trained me up in the way that I should go, the Bible says I could not depart. Well, when I was 19, I left church. When I was 19, I swore that I would never go to church again at the age of 19. I said I was done with church. I said I'll never live for God. I'll never have anything to do with the church. I'm done at 19. And it looked like, watch this, that Proverbs 22 and 6 wasn't true. Because I was running and doing things that I shouldn't have been doing for years. But mama, you better hear me. When you have connected your child with Jesus, come on, they like a dog running on an invisible leash. I wish I had a church. And they running all over here and doing everything they want to do. But when Jesus starts to pull them in, I'm, 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 I'm a witness. When Jesus starts to pull them in, they start thinking differently. They start feeling differently. Why? Because you did what you were supposed to do. God's going to do what he said he was going to do. So it behooves every mother. Make sure your children know about Jesus. Stop leaving them home on Sunday morning because they play like they too sleepy to get up. We're going to have a pajama Sunday for them. Bring them in their pajamas. Amen, somebody? It's pajama Sunday. Why he in his pajamas? Well, he was slow getting up, and you told me to bring him. No problem. Front row. Yeah. Yeah. Why that girl got rollers in her head? Because, Pastor, she didn't want to get up, and you told me to bring Okay, front row. Bring her. Yeah. Mad all in your face, white stuff around your mouth. You're going to get up next Sunday, I bet. <laughs> somebody say, I got to train them. Because I love them. And if I train them, they will not depart from it. Last question. Where would we be without the mothership? Give God praise if you got the message. <laughs> Sir, how, how old are you? You 10 years old. You are one of the best well-mannered 10 year old young men I've seen in a long time. God bless you. Thank you for helping me out. Amen. Amen. Hey, I got something for you. Hey, you, you work. You earned this. Tell your mama to take it there so you can get you something to eat. All right? Bless you. Amen. Somebody say, thank God, thank God. for the mothership.